I'll be the bold one. I'll what start. What attracted you? Oh, I mean, I was gonna ask you. Sarah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I was gonna ask you because I just saw The Wizard of Lies, mm -hmm. so I can actually, um, as an informed audience member who um, has been privileged enough to see <laughs> The Wizard of Lies, which is an extraordinary and very surprising two hours of um, a story you thought you knew. Mm. And I uh, I am actually genuinely interested, not because someone told me to ask you. And you know what... a little bit about this story yes. because you did a play, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't see. <laughs> it's okay. Which was it somewhat was a sort about of, this. So. Yeah, similarly sort of based yeah. on these events. Also, of, I think of the that Madoff. people from New York are very familiar with this story. Mm -hmm. It's such an interesting, interesting idea to take on a part that people um, think, you know, I think that must mm. be interesting for you because I think what I learned about Ruth Madoff was everybody thought they knew her. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's another complexity <clears throat> to playing a real person and it must have been <sighs> wonderfully it, challenging, I, it, I guess. It was, it was really daunting, honestly. And um, I was, offered the part and it was Barry Levinson and it was Robert De Niro and it was, uh, of, of course. Um, disappointments, horrible yeah, disappointments. Yeah, yeah, one disappointment <laughs> after another. And it wasn't until after I committed to it that it occurred to me that I was playing a real person and it was the first time that I had ever done that. Mm. And I, and somebody who had already been through so much tragedy and I knew was somewhere in the world trying to heal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. I knew this was probably the last thing in the world she would want. And of course I thought, can I get out of this? <laughs> and I felt horrible and um, I couldn't because I'd made a commitment and so. Um, so what do you decide when, you're, when you are playing a character as, as unique as Ruth Madoff who is alive, um, I, how do you, I mean, because there's lots of ways to approach it. I mean. I would assume your immediate intention was to, she is a human being who um, did or did not, was not, was or was not complicit in this unthinkable thing, right, mm -hmm. that her husband did. Mm -hmm. And so your job is to, were you wanting her to be as human for us? Did well, it matter to you? Do you know what I mean? Like, were yeah. you trying to defend her? Were you trying See, but to... See, it's interesting that right now you say was not complicit, but... Was or was not? Was not okay. complicit. And... I think that um, the consensus is that she was, and um, almost everyone, th and, and I think that that's what I hoped, I, that at the end of the day I could represent her story um, as honestly as possible, and um, because I don't think that I mean, look, it's not the Rudolph, it's not the Ruth Madoff story, but you know, and so there's a limited amount of time. But um, but it's uh, you know, she's integral because he isn't Bernie Madoff without Ruth Madoff. Mm -hmm. It's it's very possible if you removed her from his life, that the, there would not be this narrative. It's very possible that the partnership allowed for a Bernie Madoff. I mean, in every way, the virtuous, if you can find it, as well as the Machiavellian. You know what I mean? So she's important, is what I'm saying. Well, I, maybe I it's not called the Ruth Madoff story, yeah, but yeah. I think she's very important in this story. Well, I think, you know, in terms of the business side of it, she really didn't have any, anything to do with it. I mean, in the beginning, she did. I think she did some bookkeeping for him. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, more emotionally, like they were very reliant upon... They were upon very bonded. I mean, she, she, he was her first and only love. And he was, as she says, in her, you know, hit her life. And it was him and, and those two boys. And who knows if I'm going to come back. Why would you say that? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying for no, certain. I that, said uh, that you'd be able to. Forget I mentioned it. You can't do that. I'm not ready. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready to be alone. You're all I have. What about you? <laughs> what about you? About all, after all of these years deciding to come back and do... <laughs> a television series, which can be really <clears throat> grueling. Yeah. I mean, what's it like now? Because I, I did I actually, I did, I did a television series. I did two when Wait, I first what? started out. Oh, I was gonna say, like, how can I miss those? Best kept recently. Um, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, and I just remember never working harder in my life. Yeah. 
and you have two young children. Three. Three? Yeah. Um, well, one is not as young as, as I would wish sometimes. I have a 14-year-old and twin daughters who are seven. I binged watched your show, <laughs> Divorce. And um, We're gonna tell everybody. I found the characters incredibly <laughs> compelling, and I was completely sucked in, <laughs> um, especially with your character. And I was just curious, because you, I mean, you did Sex in the City for a lot of years, right? How many years yeah. did you do that? I guess the cumulative, maybe about 10, 12, over time. I mean, did time. you feel like when that ended, did you just feel like, okay, that's it, no more TV? Because it's really it's, a grind. Yeah, it is. I mean, I... And I, what made you want to come back and do this at um, this time? I guess, uh, I, I mean, when I finished Sex and the City and then the movies, um, I mean, I assumed that I... You know, I wouldn't do television for a while, and I, I think, as I always say, it requires, it demands, and it's deserving of everything. Mm. And I personally really love the medium. I like, I love, tel I love working in television. I love its what chaos. What do you love about it? I like its limitations, meaning in time. I like the urgency. Mm -hmm. I love working and working. You don't like and sitting working. around. I don't like sitting around. No. I don't like <laughs> luxury. Um, mm. Really, probably more ways than just what I'm describing. But I like, um, I like this idea of telling a lifetime of a story. This this possibility that we could go on and on if you're fortunate enough to maintain your home at HBO. You know, the idea of living an alternate life to to your own and telling a complete story about somebody. Um, the possibility, the potential. Um, I love that um, that television demands a sort of discipline when you're producing, and I'm I'm sort of bundling producing and mm -hmm. in, in with the mm -hmm. acting because for me that is a part of the mm -hmm. enormous joy and challenge and tears and um, I love how specific you have to be about every decision and and how it all adds up so quickly and that you have to have this machine that everybody understands that you have to develop a language and I have to say blue and when I say blue and you say blue are we both saying blue and and mm -hmm. um and do you have different directors for the different episodes or we do we I would find that <laughs> I would find that really challenging it, it, it is theoretically but I think what I and you did it so you might have had that experience at only it's being kind of challenging. One of the things I remember as being I think that there. I didn't, I didn't like it so much. I, I understand that, and I think in theory, to me, it, it, if I think about it, it's terrifying when there are new people. But, I mean, how do you, how do you create that shorthand with them? How do you right. get on the same page? So week that's, after week, we have, and having um, to start over. It's an enormous concern of mine, and I'm a real gatekeeper watchdog, you know, about these mm. things. We now have a director that, our Adam Bernstein, who's directing our first two episodes. That's sort of his job. He is our director, but he also is a, um, a, a producer. He's a producing director. So his job is to sort of take care of, um, is watch he a, over. Is he sort of the showrunner? He's not. Oh. No, it's different than a showrunner. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. These are good <laughs> questions. His job is to, in prep, teach mm -hmm. if there's a new person, like an interloper coming on, uh -huh. he needs to teach the language. So what okay. I always said in the first season... Did you have I, that the first the We first did, season? but I thought what was most helpful was showing dailies that I thought were the most successful attempt at what we were trying to do, to make sure that every new director that came on I would say, like, show them, uh, show them scenes eleven from episode three, because that really is what we're trying mm. to do. Mm -hmm. And if they see, okay, so they really are working in masters, and they really are overlapping, and they're really doing this and that, then they're understanding the language more quickly. I want to save my life while I still care about it. I don't love you anymore. I want a divorce. Oh, God, Robert. The promise is kind of thrilling, like somebody new, someone new to, like, make proud, or mm -hmm. someone new who's excited and not tired yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. don't know. But I love television, and it was a decision that came not because I was plotting it, but I was, this was an original idea of mine five years ago, and, and it was just an idea I was curious about marriage, and, you know, like, 
what is an American, like what does a middle class American marriage look like today? And when there is, um, when there is um, disappointment in a marriage, when there is um, extracurricular activity, how does a marriage survive it or not? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just wanted to tell it, like I love Cheever stories and, um, you know, uh, sort of Scandinavian <laughs> filmmaking. And mm. so I was interested. And then eventually it sort of became apparent that HBO was like, well, you, for you. And I was, oh, I hadn't considered it for me. I was just wanting to tell a story. Oh. So I wasn't developing so it for me. So you were just developing it as a producer. Yeah, yeah. And then I had all these other people in mind that I wanted to play the part. Part I will never say because everyone will be like, ah. Uh, but, um, but then when it was presented, I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I love this woman. I love, she's so unfamiliar. And I was so, so excited. So I said, yeah, I mean, I got the blessings of my family and my mm -hmm. husband and knowing what it would ask and require. Also, it's, it's, um, it's how many episodes? This season, we're only getting to do eight. We did 10 last season. Which is a season. lot different than doing... 22. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's like total yeah. gift. It's so much more civilized. It is. And we shoot in New York and... Um, and you don't burn people out. Right. That's and the work our, is fresher, the work is better. And we, as you and I were discussing earlier, your children are at like new milestones in their life, mm -hmm. but as mine are still at home. My young adults. Which is so crazy you know, to I, I, will, will I ever stop calling them my children? Um, <laughs> but you know, because you know, I've read a lot when you are willing to share in interviews about your life and the decision, you know, the, the decisions you make as a parent, as a wife, as an actor, how you have made other choices in the past when your children were, young, were mm -hmm, younger, mm -hmm. and so being able to shoot in New York allows for me to yes. get to make a choice, period, mm -hmm. you, you know? So you have a 14-year-old, and how old are your twins? My twins are seven, almost, they'll be eight in June. Mm -hmm. yeah, being able to shoot in your hometown is completely different it's, and doable. Yeah, well, I guess I'm, I'm curious about, um, and I'm basing this because I just read an interview, it was an interview magazine, mm -hmm. did you? And you talked a lot about um, making decisions, mm. sort of as a parent mm -hmm. first, and, mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious about even how you arrive at that. You know, like, like what is the balance and how, you know, what you want versus what your children need? Do, do you know what I mean? You know, there are no hard and fast rules. And really with anything in our business, which is one of the challenges, right. you kind of make it up as you go along. And um, the rules sort of um, develop um, as they age and it changes. And right. um, I think that when they were little, when they were really little, I could just take them anywhere. Yeah. And then once they started school, I felt like I didn't want to take them out of school during the school year. And yeah. so I sort of had these rules that, um, all right, well, I guess I'll only go away for, you know, a certain amount of time this time of year, summer is different. Right. And before you, I knew it, I just sort of, it was, I was impossible to hire because <laughs> I, I just had all of these demands and not right. that I meant to be demanding, but I was just, I was trying to keep, yeah. you yeah. know, a foot in each world. And, yeah. um, you think it would become easier, but I think that the older they get, it felt it feels that you know things just come up, and if in their lives, in their lives, you. and you're not, and you just want to be there. And yeah. um, so, um, I think that having children and doing television is really a, a wonderful option. And mm -hmm. television has changed so much mm -hmm. since you know, just even in the last 10 years, yeah. and especially for women, yeah. it's such an amazing place to do great mm -hmm. work. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like the best work for women is happening on television. There's a lot of great women doing. <sighs> um, I just women want to ask you front, one more question about- in front of the camera, about, behind the yeah. camera. Yeah, all over. And yeah. doing better by um, some of those areas that were, um, I think, legitimately criticized for lack of um, <clears throat> diversity and gender and um, television seems to um, not by, um, by force, but really naturally come mm. to female directors more, mm. writers, um, and diversity more. When you 
kept saying no to work, most mm -hmm. of the work, because it would take you away. I I'm just wondering, like, were there times when the children were at school and you thought, wow, th this is, I have made, I have sacrificed, and I miss sometimes um, that other thing. Well, the other thing that I think that, that um, sort of kept me from working is I, I paint. I'm a painter, so oh. I would do that. You were in, in, that would sort of be my creative outlet mm -hmm. when I wasn't oh, acting I because I did start to feel <clears throat> like, what am I going to do with myself? And, and also, I think as the kids got older, and you start looking at colleges, you start, right. with, well, first you start looking at high schools and then the minute they get into high school you start thinking about college and then the reality of them leaving starts to hit you and then you look around and you say, okay, what am, and, and it, 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 it starts to become real and I think at that point I thought I, I need to, I need to start kind of getting my work going again. I'm not entirely sure I, I don't have any numbers, so I don't know. But I mean, just you know, you mentioned um, just opportunity for actors, female actors in, on television being you know so rich and plentiful, and I think that's true. I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I haven't. I've perhaps neglected to pay more attention to like the disparity in film. I, I don't really. Mm -hmm. I know that it exists, and I don't really. I'm not sure why it should be. So, I mean, I'm sort of posing a question as I'm trying to give an answer, which is, is there just so much more supply in television that therefore there are more roles for women? Like, I'm not sure there I don't more know how this, this has evolved. Well, there are also just fewer movies being made in general. I, forget, I don't know the numbers right. either at the top, off the top of my head, but um, there are fewer studios. There are fewer films being made in general every year. And there's more TV. Yeah. There's and there's more distribution. There's a lot more stations. There's a lot more stations, a lot more shows. I can't keep right. up with all the shows. Oh, no, 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 no. I still haven't seen the finale for Sopranos. Um, that's how behind <laughs> I am, but don't, don't, so don't tell me. But would you ever, um, I mean, I've actually been in rooms, I would say, at least three or four times where someone's, where we're thinking about, like, we have a thing, and it's my, my companies with HBO, and they're like, you know, we're, Michelle, well, God, Michelle Pfeiffer would be great. Would she do this? Would she ever work on television? Do you, I mean, you must get endlessly offered and questioned and... I would love to do something in television because I actually, at this stage in my life, it actually fits really well because I also, um, I, I like the idea of just being in one place for mm -hmm. a while. That mm -hmm. sounds really nice to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and... Um, um, again, you know, you're all, you're always just looking to do um, good work, right. work with interesting people. Mm -hmm. There's just a range of possibilities. It's unbelievable. And nothing is off limits to these people. I don't even like to think about it. It's so spooky. Have you spoken to the boys? No one speaks to me. I'll look so, away. Do you feel like Sex and the City was ahead of its time in terms of female empowerment? Um, I don't think that empowerment was a word that was ever used once on our set in a writer's room among the female actors. What about I think people who wrote about your show? It was I definitely, am, sh I remember when it came out, it was definitely shocking for people. It was, I think the, it was controversial. the language what? was, I mean, like the kind, the, the depiction of those intimate kinds of, that, that kind of intimate relationship among female friends was brand new. Um, I think a female character who spoke so candidly about uh, sex and sexual politics and um, her curiosity about behavior, her own and others, and because she was a writer she could ask lots of provocative questions and observe and the other characters could, as they were archetypes, sort of make choices and um, it wasn't intentionally empowering, I guess is my point. Like if you ask Michael Patrick, who was our primary showrunner for most of our seasons and the movies as well. I don't know that he would have suggested that empowerment was an aim or a goal or even our primarily female writing staff. I think they liked telling stories about women. That and were authentic. That, that were authentic and 
often funny, and but the real, um, the real destination point for our show, as I understood it, and and feel as strongly a, that there is this chalice, and I get to walk around and like take care of this family heirloom. heirloom the show was really about love. It wasn't mm. about empowerment. It is. It was always a journey of finding home. You know, where is that? What does contentment mean? How do you reconcile the things you want with what you're given? How does Carrie and her female friendships, how do they find love? And it was a time and a place, um, economically and politically, and um, you know, that allowed for us to tell those stories that way. And I think it's more I hear in retrospect, people talk about it being empowering, but I think, and this is the last thing I'll say on it, I promise, but I think if you had tried to write a show that was empowering, mm -hmm. it would have been yucky and self-conscious mm -hmm. and contrived. it would have been contrived mm -hmm. and stiff versus Michael Patrick and his extraordinarily gifted and skilled writing room mm -hmm. just delight in storytelling. How many times did you have intercourse with his French penis? Oh, around 30, 32. What the fuck? 32? I just... I, yeah, you had sex 32 times? So I have my own ideas about this, but if you were forced um, to share what you think is the role that you are most recognized for, I have a few, but what would you, I guess the difference is what, what do you think and what do you think others might think? Those are two different things, don't you think? I don't think I assume to know what I should be <laughs> recognized for. Um, what um, do you think people think is, ah, uh, yeah? Well, okay, it could be Scarface. Mm -hmm. It could be a, a Catwoman. Mm -hmm. Could be Susie Diamond from mm. Baker Boys. Mm. But mm. my guess is, I don't know. I don't know. What, um, this is one of those. What do you think? Kind of not, do you well, think? Uh, you for me, say it's Scarface. Okay, yeah. Except that, except that one of my most favorite, favorite outside of Lady Hawk, um, one of my <laughs> most favorite, favorite movies of yours, and I've just forgotten that is the Jeff Goldblum, is the. Fa Baker Boys. No. Oh, Goldblum, Goldblum, Into the Night? Yes. Oh my God, really? I love that movie. You're I've seen that movie nuts. like six times. Get out! Don't you hear that from no. people? From real cinephiles? No. No? Uh-uh. Oh, that movie is, well, it's about to <laughs> be sold out at Blockbuster. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have to maybe, re God, know. that movie is fantastic. Okay. You don't think so? Well, I haven't seen it in a hundred years. Oh, you should. Okay. You know, take a look. You know, um, uh, oh, Matthew was. Really, <laughs> I, I I only can see my movies once. Yeah. And even that is no, very it's difficult. No, painful, for me. horrible experience. Uh, um, but Scarface. I mean, that's exquisite. They, I just saw it. My James Wilkie just watched it with Matthew. Mm. He's mad. He's mad for it. Matthew's like kind of walking him through movies it's such of that a decade. Weird. I guess so, although it's so, like, as a um, movie, like, for an audience, as a movie-going experience, it's so complete. You know, I mean, it's everything. It's physically so beautiful to look at, thanks in large part to you, and that dress, and then the bathing suit, but also because um, he's such a perfect filmmaker. You know, like, mm. he's such a, mm -hmm. he knows how to, like, gin the audience up. You know, he knows how to, like, pull you in, mm -hmm. and... And then you care for all the wrong, like the wrong guy. You like mm -hmm. it's also he's such a great filmmaker. So I, I can see why that is such a completely satisfying, you know, experience. Um, wait, I was going to ask you one other thing. Oh yeah, you reminded me. You just said, uh, what, did, what did you say about um, oh Midnight Run? Um, Matthew was. Um, you mean telling you stories mean into the night? Into the night. Sorry, yeah, into the night. Fine. Same thing. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, that's a great movie too. But you're not in that. I'm not um, in that. No. But um, Matthew was telling this story about um, Marlon Brando and and uh, and you know you said you haven't seen Into the Night except for once and that was in what eighty. I couldn't even begin to, to tell you what year it was. It was a great year. <laughs> um, and so he said something to Marlon Brando about like um, you know yeah I've never seen it or haven't seen it in years. Matthew's like yeah you should 
you should see <laughs> you're really good in it. Um, so I'm reminding you to do see you that go movie back again. and look at your earlier God, no, work? No, yeah. no, I don't even barely look at it the first yeah. time. No, I don't look at it if I'm I've not actually sort of forced stopped to. actually even looking at finished movies. So I don't oh, yeah. always see everything finished. Me neither, unless. There's occasions they force you to. Well, some, yeah. For press, like if you're like, well, but I would be blissfully happy to not ever see an <laughs> e a picture, dailies, the completed thing, a rough cut, none of it. I find it just. Why is it so hard? <clears throat> you tell me. No, I asked you first. <laughs> I don't know. I really mostly love the experience of acting. I love it. I love it. When it's good, when it feels good, and you're feeling that inexplicable sweet spot when the ball hits the bat, you know, like that thing, mm -hmm. it's just the greatest. The pleasure is not the seeing it that way. The pleasure was the, what, how much time do we spend? 40% of time on the set, actually the camera rolling? Right. And with a great person opposite? The acting and, is for free. <laughs> that's the best. Mm. I don't need to, and I don't want to look at stuff that doesn't really matter. I don't want to pay attention mm -hmm. to stuff about vanity that's like foolish and it's not going to mm -hmm. help anything. And I love being an audience for other people, but I would prefer not to be my own. Mm. What about you? What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just the being so self-critical. And I think um, there's the perfectionist in me, and acting is not perfect. Mm. And I think right. um, I've always been at my um, that nature. It's become worse as I've gotten mm -hmm. older. And um, I, you realize a after you've been doing this for as long as I have mm -hmm. that um, it's looking at bad takes is not going to make it any better. Mm -mm. It's not going to change anything. Mm -mm. So why put myself through it? And for some reason I've just become, I think um, the experience has become more and more in, important mm -hmm. to me, you know, yeah. and obviously you, you care about the finished product, but you realize at a certain point you, you only have so much control over yep. that. Yep. So, um, and do you, you know, ever, have you ever um, been part of the editing process? I had when I, I used to produce, and, and, uh, and, and I actually really love editing. I, I actually think that I would, um, first of all, I love things that are tedious, right? and I love the exactness of yeah. it. Um, and so that I, means you could look at yourself in the editing process more easily than you would actually be able to if you weren't involved I, on the screen. And maybe that's it. Maybe when I was producing, it made more sense for right, me to watch right. things and to go to dailies and to be familiar with the footage because I had I had more to say about it. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say usually directors are pretty generous and they actually, a lot of directors will welcome you into the editing mm -hmm. room, I found. Mm -hmm. Now I just want to kind of go and act and, and have... And, enjoy that experience as much as I can. I was saying how great all the performances are in the Madoff piece, like it's really, it's a real great um, class for actors to watch in, in a, I mean, every performance, the sons and your own and Mr. De Niro, and you were talking about um, Barry Levinson, mm -hmm. and what you were saying, you know, what a actor's director he is and, mm -hmm. um, it's so great to hear that because you really see it in the work. And I'm just, I would love if you can kind of describe how, what that means. Like when you say an actor's director, mm -hmm. like what does well, that for mean? Me, Barry, for me, Barry Levinson is like a perfect director mm -hmm. because, um, you know, we all have our strengths and, and a, a lot of times, you know, directors, maybe their strength is more visual. Maybe it's more with camera and shots mm -hmm. and, um, um, effects and things like that and you know maybe they don't focus so much on performance and then you have the other side of it where they're more performance driven and maybe not so not so technical and he's both mm -hmm. and I had always wanted to work with him and um, there were a couple of close calls earlier on in my career and so I I had just I had forgotten that he he is a perform he really knows about performance and yeah. he uh, so like can you he just, also like, doesn't what does that like mean? you know is what he, he does he doesn't also he 
doesn't waste time. And it, I think it's one yeah. of the things that you love about doing television is that he's economical and he's so clear and he's so confident and he has the vocabulary. And so, um, so like, meaning, would he just have small, really smart adjustment to make that you could feel? Sometimes like, they were big, sometimes they were small. I mean, they were just always very specific and they were always right. Yeah. And when he moved the camera, it was because it made sense. And so sometimes, right. sometimes there's an amazing camera move that absolutely has nothing to do with right. really, or they want some sort of staging because it's, for some other reason other than it, it, it really makes sense for the characters. Yeah. Those are really challenging to try to make those work. Yeah. But it was always um, very cohesive and, and helped whatever he asked you to do. Was good. Yeah. <laughs>